Hey everyone, I'm David, the designer of Hamlet, and today I want to take you through opening up a box of Hamlet and how to assemble everything together and then how to store everything inside the box of Hamlet at the end. Um, pulling this one open. This is specifically for the Founders edition of the game. The, the retail edition will probably be similar, but this one is specifically for a lot of the components that you find in the Founders edition of the game. Okay. So when you open it, the first thing that you will see that is very interesting is this founder sticker here. It will be numbered. Um, we have a 13,000 print run for the founder's edition. We won't do this again. And it will be the number of your copy written there with my signature on it. Um, so that's the top and the inside of the box. You should have that. Inside then you should have three rule books. Well, three pieces of rule books. Um, the rule book itself, the solo rule sheet, oopsie, and uh, an assembly sheet to assemble both the 3D church as well as the insert that we'll, I'll show you how to assemble very soon as well. So let's put that aside. Apart from that, we also have a bag, a bunch of wooden pieces, the wooden cubes, um, the metal coins, and a lot of punch boards. So now I'm gonna take all of these out and then we're gonna punch them and then we're going to start assembling everything together. Do note that in your version, you will find all of the different ones in separate bags sorted by the type of piece rather than by the color with a piece of silica gel inside. Do not eat. Um, but for now, I've already sorted them like this. I didn't want to resort them because we're going to sort them like this later. All right, let's go. Let's unbox everything. Here is everything that you will find inside the Hamlet box. There's a total of 10 punch boards. You will notice that they are numbered from, of course, one to 10. Um, the first thing that I think you should do is assemble the, the insert as well as the 3D church. We're going to start with the insert because it's nice and easy. Um, of course, you remember to follow what you see here on this page. This is very easy, but if you want to follow along with me, you can do that as well. I'll do it quickly and then I'll show you how to put it into the box, okay? So take punch board six and seven. They look like this. Punch them out, remove all of those little in-between bits which I've already removed and then come back here and together we'll put it inside the box. So I've gone ahead and punched out all of the pieces of the insert and you will see that each one of them is numbered somewhere on the piece itself and those numbers correspond to the pieces that you see in each of these things. Uh, there are three main pieces of the, of the insert. They will assemble with each other and then they will come together into one big insert plugging into each other in a really nifty way and I will insert that into the box to create the separation system and the storage system for Hamlet Founders Edition. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm starting with A, B and C and then we'll put them together. Come back when you've assembled each one of them. All right, now that you have all three pieces, A, B and C all assembled together, we need to put them together uh, to form the final part of the insert and to form the whole kind of thing. You will have parts of it hanging like this and parts of it that are not attached to anything. This is normal, this is on purpose so that we can attach everything together. So the way I personally usually do, that, do this is by taking part A first, attaching it to part B and then attaching C to B. I think this is the easiest way to do it. You do that by placing part A there, plugging part B into it this way, and then you have a lot of little parts looking like this, and then you will go ahead and insert uh, part C from the top here, attaching it to both A and B. There's two slots here for you to do that. And once you've attached that down, then all you have to do is attach the puzzle pieces um, that, that the insert comes with uh, to bring them together and lock them all together. Like so, this one goes down here, this one goes down here, and the last one is there. There we go, that's the whole insert assembled. What you need to do is you're going to need to take that insert and insert it into the box. Here. So to do that, you're going to align it like so. You'll see there's four slots here to put the player, player uh, meeples and player parts and player wooden bits. Those correspond to these four slots here. So if you align it that way, you will have a large gap here that aligns with this large gap over here. So I'm just going to go in and place that into the box and done. And now it doesn't move and it's nice and solid. 
perfect. The first part of the assembly is done. Now we're going to move on to assembling the church. For this, you will also need two other punch boards. That is punch board eight and punch board nine. So go ahead and get punch board eight and punch board nine. Let's assemble that one because this one is a little tricky. All right, here we are, punch board eight and punch board nine, as well as this. This is the Hamlet um, church assembly sticker. It says on it, church double-sided adhesive sheets. They are pre-cut in a specific shape and they are labeled with uh, a different letter corresponding to each of these different parts of the church. The first thing you want to do is punch all of these out. And then after you've punched them all out, you're going to want to bend them at all of the bendable areas and make sure you go through all of them. Especially take great care to bend all of the areas of these two towers here. You will see that they have spots to bend here in these triangles and each of the triangles also bends this way, like so. So make sure you also do all of these bends like so, so that you make sure you crease them in all of the correct places. This will make, will make it easier for them to keep their shape when the church is assembled in 3D. Okay, so I'm gonna go do all of these and then we'll come back to assemble. All right, now that we've punched them all out, you can follow the instructions here, but we're going through a little bit more detail uh, with me now, but you have the church, the 3D church assembly sheet included in the box that should tell you exactly how to do it. But of course here we're going into it a little bit more detail. I'm starting with the nave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find part A here from the sheet. I am going to peel that off, making sure I peel off the sticky bit. We ordered extra sticky uh, tape on this, so it might be stuck together a little bit. That's okay, just peel it off and tear it. And then apply the sticker to the dotted line that you have on the church piece that you are assembling at the moment. I'm just going to do there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once that is there, we're going to peel off the top part, the brown part, and leave the adhesive film onto the church itself, like so. We have a nice thin adhesive film. Next thing we do is we're going to bend this over here. This is the part with the sticker and we're going to lock in the sides. You will see that in the bottom of the sticker there are two grooves, one here and one over here on the church. These are used so that you can lock, like so, the two sides in. And this stops them from uh, unfolding and moving. Once you've managed to lock that in, you will see that the sides lock in under and on the side over here. You can fold this top to seal it in and press it from underneath. I'm going to do the same thing on this side and press it from underneath. Now you'll see they're locked in already and they're not moving and it's already kind of assembled. The last thing we need to do is make sure that all of these are folded. Fold it over and in and then lock the bottom part in between all of those like so. And this will form your solid nave. This one is the easiest to assemble. Let's do the other parts. Next up, I'm gonna do the apse, which is this one right here. Yes, there's only one of these, that's part B. We're gonna follow a similar kind of situation. Again, we're first going to stick this in and then we're going to fold it to be able to bring in the two sides. But in this case, the sides are not immediately attached to it. They actually need to come from the other side. So I'll show you how we do this in a simple way. Again, simply and easily, we're going to take sticker B, make sure you peel it off right. And sometimes it might be stuck to the sides. That's normal. And I'm going to apply it to the dotted line. There we go. And peel off the adhesive film. Now I'm going to fold B again, fold this over lock it in and under, and I'm not going to stick the bottom quite just yet. I'm going to bring in the sides first to make sure I fit the slot that you see here. You see there's a slot over here and a slot on the other side. These need to fit with the slots on the two sides of the apps. So I'm gonna make sure that's folded and I'm gonna fit that one in first. Before you even stick anything, you can make sure that all the slots have kind of been filled. This is the best way to make it um, fit correctly, so there you go. One is locked in, the other is locked in. Now that they're both locked in like so, put down the big bottom bit to seal it in, and then the two on the sides. There we go. Next up, 
We're going to do part C and part D. These are both the same and they're pretty easy to do actually. The, the hardest are the towers and the one we just did. So let's do C and D, they are the same. They're just mirror images of each other. Let's go through how to do that. Like we did before, we bend the bottom down first and we lock in the sides into the grooves. This one has grooves more similar to part A that we already did. So we're going to do those two sides first, one and two. Press them really hard from the bottom like so. There we go. And then we're going to fold everything over. That's one, two. And we have the T-shape there that's going to slot right in to the empty spaces that are left. It's going to be real tight. I'm going to do the other part D now, which is, it should be done the same. So follow the same principle. Now for these babies, these are a little tougher to assemble correctly. These were very difficult for us to design. So I'm going to go with E first. Again, sticking the square sticker on the bottom, peeling off the adhesive uh, sticker to leave the adhesive film behind. There we go. Again, we're going to fold over the bottom, bring in the sides and lock them into the slots. Make sure we overlap them correctly. I'm gonna bring in both and then I'm gonna close the other one later on. So there we go. Make sure that all of these ones on top, all of the triangles have been folded in each of the each of the little folds that we have here. Okay. So again, we bring the sides to the bottom, we lock them in to the grooves and we close. That's one, that's two. And then the last one is easy to bring in. Just bring it in, make sure it's nice and tight here it closes off well and there we go last tower follows the same kind of principle there we go that's the last tower you'll notice that in the parts that are covered in the church you have also um, a little bit of a toy doll's house effect where you can see what's happening inside. Once you put it all together, you'll see that all of this is covered. So that's how you, you can figure out this is the front where the door is over here. You can place that like so. The back, of course, goes there and it should fit in there. And you have the two aisles like so. There we go. And then the two towers. Two towers. You fit in. Mm. There it is, the 3D church. We've assembled it. All right, let's put it aside and get to punching and doing everything else. Here's all of the other punch boards you should have. There's the flat version of the church here, just in case you don't want to use that one, the, the, the 3D one. There's the alternate church style. Bunch of punch boards. Let's just get everything punched and then I will tell you how to sort them. The first thing that you're going to want to do is take out all of the wooden components and sort them into four bags of this size, of the same size more or less, by color instead of by type, right? Um, you can throw away the silica gel and then you can make four bags like this of the four player colors with each one of their own colors. Put those aside. The second thing you want to do is put away for now, the metal coins, you can leave them in their own bag. That's how we'll store them in their own bag. Third thing you want to do is likely take the wooden components here. Uh, these are the raw materials and we're going to use one of the little bags that comes with the game. And we're going to store those in there because I feel like the little bags, little empty bags that come with the game are really nice to store these because they fit really, really nicely and it feels good. So that's done and we put it away. Now you should have a few other bags in here that you're going to use some for the wooden components, some for other things. 
I'm gonna use the other three teeny weeny little bags, one for the flat version of the church, which you can use instead of the 3D version if you want something simpler and something that's flat so it doesn't cover anything on the board. I'm gonna use the second one for the starting player marker, this wooden hammer here, and I'm gonna use the last one for the market tiles, these square little tiles here. So now you should be left with a bunch of tiles and a few bags left over. One of the bags we're going to be using for these tile chits. These are a Kickstarter exclusive and uh, are only in the Founders Edition and they are used for those of you who don't want to put the actual tiles inside the, the, the bag. We still recommend you use the, the regular tiles. So for those of you who want more, uh, more full perfect randomness, then you can use these. On the front they have the name of the tile you're going to want to get and on the back they have the shape to make it easier for you to find. Those ones, um, I don't usually use them, but you can put them inside one of the bags and keep them separate from the rest. Those fit in there nicely. I'm gonna throw them in. Now there's two more bags. One of them is going to be for the awards and the milestones. These are the little ribbons that you have here. Those go into one of the bags. You should have one bag left at least, which you are going to use for the solo components. Um, those are these round chits that you see over here, as well as this square yellow chit here. That's what the last bag is for. I'm gonna drop those in there. There we go. Now, the building tiles. It's time to sort these out. So, for this, you're gonna need the bottom of the box that we've already assembled with the, with the um, tray inside, and of course, the canvas bag. All right, so here we are, the tiles, canvas bag and the rest of the things that we need. One thing you will notice is that on the back of each tile and sometimes on the front for the ones that are double-sided, you will have an icon on the top of each tile which tells you where it needs to go. This can be one of six different icons. Some of them have a refined material icon, like this one here does. Um, this one that you see here, you see the milk. That means it goes into the, into the box where the milk icon is. You can see that in one of the slots here, you have uh, an icon that says milk. That means you can place it down. And this, this part of the insert is made so that you can place them like this because during the game you can just grab them from the insert itself. You see you also have little slots for your fingers so that you can easily grab the tiles that go there and throw them into the bag very, very quickly. So the game kind of stores with part of the setup already done. Um, and that's cool. There are other icons. This one here, for instance, means that it goes into the bag itself and you can store it that way whenever you store it so that it's easier for you to set up the game. So this one, the dairy farm, starts in the bag so I'm just gonna chuck it in the bag. This one here, the church, this means it starts on the table. Stuff that starts on the table goes into this part of the insert here where the table icon is listed. So I'm just gonna place it there. You should be able to fit the church and the alternate church tile easily in there. They both have that icon. This one, the stone mason, has the bag etc etc I'm gonna continue the other three icons that you could have are this one this means that it's a timber tile there is a slot right here for the timber tile I'm just gonna put it here there are ones that have the uh, stone the brick sorry um, icon like this one here that goes into the brick slot over there and the flower icon which is this one right here all right, and I'm gonna put that there. So I'm gonna sort all of these tiles like that, either in the bag, if they start on the table, I'll put them on top of the churches that I've put here. And if they're in one specific of the four upgrade piles, then I put them there. I'm gonna go ahead and sort them out this way right now. When you've sorted everything out, you should have four tiles in each of the slots here. You should have a few tiles that start on the table right here. You should have a few tiles inside the bag, which can fit perfectly over there. And then you should have uh, a few other things. So this one is the solo board. I usually like to fit it under here. Uh, and then this we will fit soon enough. Let's now fill all of the other slots that we have. Each of these can fit the bag 
like so for each of the players. So one, two, three, and last but not least, four. This slot here is intended to store the cardboard 3D church and it should fit everything nicely. As you can see, those fit there, this can fit next to it, and then here we have enough space to fit these also in a really nice way. Usually I like to store it this way. Here, the icons help you. You fit these, the metal coins, these, and pretty much everything else that you want to fit. I usually put them all here. Here we go. Also, you will notice that here on top of the insert, there is a slot to fit the scoreboard that makes it fit, sit like so and makes it fit inside so that it doesn't move around uh, when you close the game. On top of these, you of course put your solo, your assembly sheet if you'd like to keep it and the rule book. I do recommend that you store it with the way that the insert shows it. So the insert has an orientation and of course, ideally you store it in that way. It, you can also store it the other way. It doesn't make a big difference, but this makes it, you know, makes it stay, uh, stay the best way. So if you store it this way, it will last longer um, inside. We've tested it with the shake test and we've also tested it by placing it on the shelf, like so standing up and the insert holds everything together. So when you open it again, everything is already sorted. And when you finish playing a game, we suggest that you sort up the tiles uh, that have the icons on them directly in the way that we've just sorted them. Because that means that when you get to play again, you can get up and running with a game of Hamlet in less than five minutes. You want to see if everything's still together? Let's check. It works. I'm really proud of that. All right, guys, this is how to store and how to assemble your copy of Hamlet Founders Deluxe Edition. I want to thank you because if you're here, it means you backed the first ever Kickstarter for Hamlet uh, and you have got your hands on this exclusive version of Hamlet. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a backer and for being here. And now just go and play and enjoy the game like I am and I've been for a while. See you guys.